Welcome everybody to another episode of our Exploring the Bible Together uh, series, a conversation that we're having with the Bible Project videos. Uh, welcome to, to join us as we, as we enter into this discussion with another episode. I am Deacon Andrew Moore, and I am joined by Pastor Paul Miller and Pastor Jake Bain. We have been, for the last several episodes, taking a look at uh, poetic literature in the Bible, and it's a pretty broad category that is being applied to a, a wide variety of writings, uh, and predominantly, uh, we have been spending a lot of time in the Old Testament, which we'll do again today. Today, we're going to be taking a look at uh, the, the literature, the writings of Solomon, which include the book of Proverbs, the book of Ecclesiastes, and the book of Song of Solomon. So let's watch the video, come back, and unpack a little bit about what we hear from the writings of Solomon. In the story of the Bible, King Solomon was the wisest ruler that Israel ever had. And there are three books in the Hebrew Scriptures connected to him, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, and the Song of Songs. They pass down the legacy of Solomon's wisdom, but in a surprising way. So let's talk about how to read the books of Solomon. Okay, to really appreciate the story of Solomon's wisdom, we have to go back to the Garden of Eden. Where God created humanity, male and female. <laughs> right, Adam and Eve. And God commissions them to rule the world together in intimacy and love. Kings and queens of creation. Now, in order to rule, you need to be wise. And the humans have a choice about how to gain wisdom. Yeah, they could live by God's wisdom, which will lead to life or they could become wise in their own eyes. And that's what they choose, to take the knowledge of good and bad into their own hands. And immediately, the intimacy between man and woman is broken. They hide their bodies from each other and then from God. Their choice leads to division and death. But the story holds out hope for a future human who will make the right choice and rely on God's wisdom. Like King Solomon, he prayed that God would give him the knowledge to know good from bad so he could rule with true wisdom. Exactly. He reverses the failure of Adam and Eve, and it leads to abundance. In Solomon's day, every Israelite sat in peace under their own fruit tree. Oh, it's like he's creating Eden. Well, for a while. But then Solomon fails. He marries hundreds of women from other nations, and he's deceived to follow their gods. And this begins Israel's long descent into self-destruction. And so when we turn to the books of Solomon, we're invited to learn wisdom from his successes and his failures. Got it. So let's start with Proverbs. Okay, so the book of Proverbs is most well known for the hundreds of short, memorable sayings that teach us how to live by God's wisdom. Like, trust in the Lord with all your heart and don't be wise in your own eyes. In Proverbs, living by God's wisdom instead of your own is called the fear of the Lord. Like in the book's opening paragraph, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Now, Proverbs isn't just memorable sayings. It actually begins with a lot of poetry. Yes, nine chapters of speeches from Solomon to his royal sons. He tells them to pursue God's wisdom, which is symbolized as an elegant woman. Wisdom is a woman? Yes. So remember, in the Garden of Eden, the man and the woman's intimacy was violated by their failed search for wisdom. But now in Proverbs, humans who reunite with God's wisdom become what Adam and Eve failed to be, wise human rulers. Proverbs 3 even says that when we embrace Lady Wisdom, we're taking hold of the tree of life. Now we're the ones in the garden. Exactly. Proverbs is saying that every day we all stand before the tree with our own choice to make. And Solomon urges us, choose wisdom and life. Got it. So how does Ecclesiastes fit into Solomon's story? Well, in this book, it's like we're meeting Solomon near the end of his life, and he offers some sober reflections. Life is hevel. That's the Hebrew word for vapor or smoke, which is unpredictable and uncontrollable. And he's constantly talking about life under the sun. That is, life outside of the garden, how it's confusing and difficult. Right, even when I live by God's wisdom, life can be full of disappointments. Leading up to the ultimate disappointment, your own death. That's depressing. But at the end of the book, he says we should strive to live by wisdom and the fear of the Lord, just with more realistic expectations. Got it. Well, maybe the next book will cheer us up. The Song of Songs. 
a love poem between a man and a woman, and it'll make you blush. Yeah, on its basic level of meaning, this book is racy Hebrew love poetry. But remember, in Proverbs, humanity's pursuit of wisdom was portrayed with the symbolism of a man pursuing a woman in a garden. But in this song, it's the woman who's searching and longing for her lover. Yes, it's a poetic image of Lady Wisdom pursuing us so that we can have life. In fact, the song ends with a poem about how this lady's love is more powerful than death itself. So the song works on two levels. It's celebrating humans' desire for intimacy. And saying that that desire points to humanity's ultimate purpose, to be united with God and His wisdom. So we can rule united with each other. Exactly. This is why the song ends with the man and the woman united in love under a fruit tree. So the story of Solomon and these three books invite us to see ourselves within the whole biblical story. Yes, they're about how God designed all of us to rule the world by his wisdom so that we can all find true life. All right, welcome back. Another great video with lots to think about. Um, and helpful in this case, first of all, to have that category of wisdom. Uh, wisdom literature is written in this poetic style. And several books, certainly the three uh, highlighted in this video, are in that category. Uh, books of wisdom, where we can encounter God's wisdom through these writings. Uh, these all associated with Solomon. Uh, and then it's also helpful to see some distinctions within that. So, um, these are each sort of uh, uh, connected with maybe a time in Solomon's life uh, is one way to think about it, or to just think about how uh, there are different aspects or facets to God's wisdom, and that there's a conversation to be had between those. Um, I, I think um, that's how I love to read these books, is to say, you know, Proverbs kind of lays out one version of wisdom that's maybe most familiar to us. Um, here are just some smart ways of going about life, and, and uh, uh, not being too too proud and, and so on. And um, I've sometimes said Proverbs is the book that says, you know, if, if, if uh, you do good, you do, you'll do well. Um, and then Ecclesiastes come along and says, well, not always. And sometimes the bad prosper, the evil prosper. And um, uh, so, yeah, there's, and, you know, there's this conversation about his life, about re renounce, uh, renouncing things and abstaining, or his life to be enjoyed. Uh, that conversation uh, plays out um, between these books. Uh, so uh, understanding how these fit into a prophetic style and how they fit together, but also our, our intention and conversation with each other is, I think, a good place to start with these. Yeah, and I think this notion of wisdom um, helps us look at the deep thinking uh, that goes into the biblical writers, like that's a part of why we are so invested in study is that there's, there's ideas and there's complexity and there's scholars that have thought about the deep issues like what is the meaning of life, right? Those, are, those aren't necessarily new ideas. They've been around for a long time and, and, our, and our biblical writers get to tackle some of those issues. So when you're reading um, wisdom literature, it's a part of entering that wisdom tradition as well and wrestling with some of these um, more fundamental human existential questions. I love uh, Proverbs um, that kind of frames what wisdom begins with. Um, the, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of all wisdom. So um, they make an argument already from the very beginning of where are you gonna find wisdom? Well, it's gonna have something to do with <laughs> a, a fearing God, of having God at the center. And then by the time you get to uh, uh, Ecclesiastes, you know, probably the most pessimistic book <laughs> in all of scripture. Uh, you read that book and it's not exactly a pick me up. It's very, you know, I've tried searching for wisdom over here in work. I've tried searching for wisdom over here in, uh, in pleasure. I've tried searching for wisdom in relationships and I'm always, always disappointed. And, and then, you know, eventually we come back to that wisdom uh, theme of it's in, it's in the Lord in which we find our true purpose and meaning. Uh, and then, uh, you know, I love the Song of Solomon um, scripture as well, which actually pushes us a little bit more in terms of 
what what are we what are, what happens when we read the Bible? Well, there's some pretty racy stuff in there. You know, they they weren't afraid to write about and to describe God in uh, in in the form of a lover or something like that. They were quite comfortable with using that kind of language, a love letter, uh, really between God and humanity. And I think when we read these different genres of which we're trying to do in you know this this exploring the Bible together uh, series we're doing it begins to increase our bandwidth too about um, how, how do we relate to God? Where do we find ris- wisdom and how do we give language to our, our faith as well? I thought the, the video really was incredibly creative with the way that they used imagery. Uh, I love how they start off with the Garden of Eden and Adam and Eve and this idea of humanity being in a place of having a choice to make about do they live by God's wisdom, or do they try to make up their own wisdom as they go along, and that that results in this fracturing of a relationship between humanity and, and, and God, and then they bring in the tree, and wisdom, and the tree of life, and then by the, by the end of the video, you've got, you know, this repetitive imagery of a relationship and a restoration of a relationship and a, a return to true intimacy uh, and closeness by living according to God's wisdom. And that's what Solomon is calling people to do, uh, to, re- to, to live in a way that returns us to that real relationship of closeness where we realize that wisdom is not our own wisdom, but wisdom is, is living according to what God has in- intends for us to do. And then, you know, by the end of the, the end of the video, there's the, you know, the, the two lovers sitting underneath the tree and then it's Adam and Eve and the tree of life. And then it's us all sitting or gathered around this tree of life that we're in this together. We're all part of that call to live in intimacy with God, just as Adam and Eve were, uh, to, to, to be in that kind of close relationship and that Solomon is trying to provide guidance and encouragement and some, some stark realities and, and even to say it's not always going to be neat and easy and simple and it's not, you know, it's not uh, always going to be um, clear, but to continue to return, return, return back to that fear of the Lord, which I love the way that they frame that, that they talk about fear of the Lord, really meaning living according to God's wisdom. Um, And not just, you know, it's not about being scared of God. It's about, uh, do we put our trust and our hope and our faith in God and trust God's wisdom? Um, And, and really what we, what we need to be afraid of is our own wisdom (laughs) and what that can lead to and the, and the problems that that can create when we, when we, listen to our own voices and, and stop listening to God's voice. That is super helpful, right? Fear of the Lord is one of those phrases we trip over. I'm looking at two other people who teach confirmation. And so when we teach the, um, the meanings of the commandments, I'm going to use this, right? Um, we are to fear and love God. So that is how Luther begins all this. What does that mean? That means um, setting aside our own pretension to wisdom um uh and then also loving loving god so a couple other things to pick up you know you, the the imagery of the tree and the fruit all through scripture right and in the new testament the cross becomes the tree of life and by revelation you know the tree of life for the healing of the nations boy you see it through the whole scripture um that's the power of poetry right going back to our our, our session on metaphor really it's about images that build in meaning through scripture the tree the fruit um, the woman in all three of these, um, I think to the extent I was taught to read Proverbs, I was taught, you know, pick a chapter, read a little bit, you know, find a memory verse, you know, uh, a calm voice turns away wrath or, you know, there's so many favorites out of Proverbs and they're, and they're good. And that's, that's the point, but they were intentionally put in this 31 chapter framework where this woman keeps showing up and saying, choose, choose this way. And, and sort of Solomon's voice saying, follow listen to this woman um and then you know it totally opened up how i saw proverbs to to see that framework so you get to proverbs 31 i believe is the faithful woman some churches that's read on mother's day 
I think uh, Jews often associate it with Ruth because Ruth is the next book after Proverbs in the Jewish Bible. Um, so other great ways to read it. But with this insight, you realize that um, if you follow the way of wisdom, you end up married to God wisdom at the end. Uh, the, that the, um, that uh, uh, anyway, it's, it, and then um, I find these books very helpful in opening so much of Jesus' story because Jesus is a prophet and a teacher of wisdom. So his parables, you know, echo these proverbs. I mean, it, often they have a little proverb in them, the last shall be first and the first shall be last or something like that. And then there's a story that goes with that. Um, Jesus is a, a, a teacher and, and, um, and John chapter one says the word became flesh. And that's John's way of saying who Jesus is. That's this wisdom of God that that Solomon was seeking in these books. Now the New Testament claims um, this one that that we seek and is sometimes elusive has now come to us uh, in the flesh. So just all kinds of depth and resonance in these books uh, once you um, have some of these keys for for opening them. Well and and, and I think a key distinction for me in all this, you know, was the knowledge of good and evil. You know, when we talk about knowledge and wisdom, we often use those terms interchangeably, and they're not the same thing, right? Um, part of what we're doing in our in our own endeavor here is trying to gain more biblical knowledge and fluency, and that's important. Um, but you know, you can be the smartest person in the world and not have the wisdom of understanding the depth of of God's love and God's purpose in life. And, and that's, that's a part of our pursuit, I think. And the wisdom literature draws us back to that and to what is true knowledge. Well, it is the fear of the Lord in which, we, in which we receive wisdom. And it is something that is given. I love the image of Lady Wisdom pursuing us, right? God pursuing us and not just us pursuing it on our own endeavor. There's this kind of divine dance that's happening as we read scripture and as God enlightens us. That's one of the the great um, um, uh, confirmation passages of who the Holy Spirit is, the one who enlightens us, calls, gathers, and enlightens us. So God instills that wisdom in us to help us understand uh, the depth of who God is and finding our place in this world. Again, frames Jesus' incarnation, you know, the God who seeks us out. So, um, uh, yeah, and... You know, they, they did a, a spiritualizing of the Song of Solomon, um, which I think is, is there, right? I mean, this is a picture of intimacy as it ought to be. Um, you know, if, if the fall hadn't happened, this is what human intimacy would be like and human intimacy with God. Um, but also there's this wonderful life-affirming uh, strain in Ecclesiastes. Um, you get the sense that, you know, find work you enjoy, um, you know, enjoy food and drink, um, that God's, again, if, if, if the fall hadn't happened, a big part of human life would be just about enjoying this creation that God has given us. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Yeah, right. And, and that's a big part of what Song of Solomon is about too, which, you know, again, I don't know if it's the Puritans or whatever through church history and the monks and whatnot, um, but we've got this a sense that the Bible is about, re, you know, renouncing pleasure and, and, um, uh, and you know, being, being worried about sexuality and human intimacy. And, um, and that is not what you find in the Bible. So just on the very most basic level, the, the wisdom literature, a big part of it is about how to be a human being. And that, you know, again, opens up Jesus' teachings that um, a big part of salvation is, is putting aside all of our, our um, uh, anxieties about being, being human, right? And instead, again, yeah, taste and see or, um, uh, you know, live in the fear of the Lord. And then there is this, um, it's almost as if Eden is, is opened up for us again. Yeah. And you recognize that some of the most content people aren't the wealthiest, right? Or the, you know, thinking who have the most. It's the, the powerful. Who have that, that connection, that wisdom of God who, who, who they exude through them. And you're like, that's, that's someone who has the wisdom of the Lord. Well, let me, let me close with prayer today. Thanks for the discussion, everybody. The Lord be with you. 
finanser och så. Good and gracious God, we are grateful that your wisdom is constantly being poured out upon your people. That you have given this wonderful collection of wisdom writings for us to seek the deep meanings of life and to find that in the fear of the Lord we find our true wisdom. Continue, Lord, to pursue us with goodness and justice and mercy that we might know the depth of your wisdom in this world and that we might enjoy all of the wonder that it brings with us. Open our minds, our hearts, our spirits to see the fullness of that goodness and may we continue to imbibe your word and be drawn into your, into your holy presence. In the name of Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you all for joining us again. Uh, we have one more uh, series on poetic literature. I hope you join us for our next one. God be with you. Bye.